Do you love or hate that song? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I, these days, we're like friends with benefits. You know, <laughs> I can't tell a lie. I, I probably had, uh, you know, maybe ten years of of not playing it at all, and uh, you know, we kind of fell out for a bit. But but nowadays, we're friends. You know, but I, I feel like now, uh, after all these years, like it's it's almost like a, I'm more like a custodian of the record. You know, because. It's, it's had so many kind of emotional connections with, with so many people. And as you can imagine, I get like messages all the time. Like it was played at my, at my wedding or it was, you know, it was on, uh, I went to a gig when, when I met my wife or, or even played at funerals and things like that. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's quite humbling in a way. Chesney Hawks, the face of funerals. Who uh, yeah, I know, exactly. Weddings, bar mitzvahs, funerals, I do them all, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you're not the only one haunted by a big hit. Uh, Elton John uh, many years ago said that if he has to sing your song one more time, he'll murder someone. <laughs> Was that, well, I'm not quite that bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> There'll be no murdering going on, really. Definitely not. We know Elton can be a bit feisty, but uh, w- what a career. Um, tell me about your childhood. Was, that, was, there, was there anything in your childhood, your upbringing, that was a clue that things might happen? Because, I mean, you, you know, the, you've got great pedigree, haven't you? Your, your dad was a, a musician in the tremolos. Yes. And, and, and your mum was, uh, was a TV star and sort of model and actress. She was. For, for, for your older viewers, she, she was one of the golden girls on The Golden Shot, which was a, a game show with Bob Monkhouse back in the 60s. And that's where they met, from my parents met. Dad, the tremolos were were that week's musical guest, and that's, uh, that's where they met. That's amazing. So you definitely yeah. grew up in that environment, in that world. And, yeah. and, and how old were you when you thought, no, I'd like to have a go at this myself? Well, Dad always says I came out singing. You know, it, it, I think, uh, I, think uh, I, I have never had any other job apart from Paperboy at, like, 14. You know, I'd, uh, I've always wanted to do this. I've always, and I've always loved it. You know, even now, like, you know, 30 years after my first uh, record, I still... I can't pass a guitar without picking it up. And, you know, music is, is still very much in my blood, you know. Yeah, and I don't think we should dwell on the song because it is a great hit. But you've got a massive body of work, which is, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the box set is out now. I mean, it's, you know, there's yeah. tons of songs. But I understand how people can get hung up on that song. It was, a, it was you know, a massive hit. And, uh, you know, but, but one of the reasons I wanted to put that box set out, I mean, my, I've got a, you know, a fan base that's stuck with me all these years and... Uh, you know, they all know that I've put different records out over the years. Um, but, I, you know, there are people out there that only know me for the one song. And I, you know, but then I again, you'll have a fan base <laughs> who love all of your albums, and yeah. all of the singles, and they, they'll go to your concerts and, yeah. and they're humming every tune, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I, I have a bunch of songs that, that uh, are more requested than the one and only, you know. Yeah, yeah, because that's it. You, it's a parallel world, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's your fan base, which is massive, and then, and then there's just everyone else that goes to weddings and, and says... Yeah, you can yeah, play so. the one and only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's, you know, that's... Going back to... I mean, I'm an obsessive Elton John fan. He was my yeah. specialist subject in, in Celebrity Master. Oh, really? But, How you know, you... all people talk about is The Lion King, you know, and, and yeah. so I'm Still Standing. Was like, wait a minute, there's, there's oh, a lot God. better stuff than Elton's that. Elton's a legend, man. I mean, yeah. you, you, what, what a songwriter. I, I, I've always been a massive... Uh, so we have that in common. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, did you... Have you come into contact with some of... Well, you must have done some of... Some I, rocks I met Elton once. Uh, very nice to me. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I met Paul McCartney. Did he offer you a duet? <laughs> no, he didn't. That's what you want. Yeah, and I, was, I was waiting for it. Dua Lipa like... action. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Been Kiki D number two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which one would I have been? That's the thing. That's the, thing. Yeah. That's the ultimate <laughs> question. Um, and, and so, and others. I mean, are, are there people that you've met that really, you know, memories of some of the some of the legends you've encountered? Um, well, when I met Paul McCartney, McCartney that, I mean, because I'm a huge Beatles fan. I grew up, I um, you know, just obsessed with the Beatles, and and. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was an amazing moment for me. Well, uh, under what uh, circumstances? We, I was backstage at a McCartney show, actually. And it's quite a still funny story because this is years, years ago, back in 92 or something like that. And I came backstage and uh, um, his ex-wife, uh, Linda, was there. And uh, his late wife, sorry. And uh, she, she looked at me across the crowd and, and kind of pointed at me. And uh, I was like, me? And so she, she, said, she was like, stay there, you know. She came running, came over, she said a load of few people came up to me. She's like, I have photos of your father from the 60s that I would love to get to him. So she was just an absolute sweetheart. And when we started talking, I, I was just amazed at how lovely she was. And then as I'm talk, talking to her, Paul came up. And I uh, said, hey, I love your song. I was like, <gasps> OK, I can die happy. Yeah, and your, knee, your knees turned to jelly. <laughs> they did, they did, yeah. And, and how, how did fame change your life? I mean, did it change your life? 
Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, you know, the, the thing about that kind of meteoric rise, like, that comes out of nowhere, really. And, you know, one minute you're... I was, I was a piano player in, in uh, you know, in pubs and stuff around the area, and I was young doing that from, like, 15 years old, playing Elton John songs and... Is that right? You know, John Lennon and stuff like that. So I went you, from... You played piano in bars. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough yeah. audience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's... I always say a tribute to... That's, that's where I learned my kind of craft, really, you know. you've got to keep their attention, haven't you? Well, it's... it's every show is different. Like, one, one can be like, you know, uh, I'm sitting there in the corner and everyone's ignoring me and they're drinking their beers or whatever. And so I just sit there just playing whatever and play, play for myself. And then the next day would be, you know, people calling out for requests for songs and things like that. Whereabouts, so, was, whereabouts was that you were playing? I grew up in Berkshire. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, so pubs around there? It, yeah, exactly. So, like, country pubs? Yeah, country pubs. Did fights exactly. ever break out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I had that. Yeah. <laughs> I had that a few times, yeah. <laughs> but again, it's all character building, isn't it? No, exactly. I, I wouldn't change those days uh, for anything. They were some of my favourite times. Can you identify... A moment when you got your big break, when things changed for you. Yes, um, I got. I, I, I auditioned for a lead part in a film with Roger Daltrey, and and so that's where it, that's the bit, that was the break that, that came. And I only did that because uh, I'd never acted before in my life. But I only did it because I thought that's maybe a way into the music industry. Perhaps there's that elusive record deal at the end of that, you know, which that's what happened. You were about 19, weren't you, at the time? Well, I was 17 when I got the part. You're kidding me. Yeah, yeah. And then the single came out, that that notorious song came out, I think, how old were you then? I was 19 19 there, yeah. 19 19. years of age. Could you handle the attention? Well, I kind of grew up with fame. So, you know, my dad was famous. My mum had some fame. All my dad's friends were like Jerry Marsden from Jerry and the Pacemakers and, you know, all these 60s stars. So, So I feel like... You know, because of that, it's not not that I couldn't I could handle it. It's just it's just that I was more used to it. I think you know it wasn't weird. It wasn't a weird thing. Yeah, that's it. Your your dad, of course, Len Chip Hawks, uh, bassist of the Tremolos, and and your mum, who of course uh, was was uh, this TV star, as I mentioned, and she did she did so much else. And uh, yeah, they 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 must be very very proud of you, are they? They are. Yeah, I mean, you know, dad was. I put it this way, with that kind of upbringing, my brother and sister and I were never going to be accountants, you know. <laughs> it, was always, it was always going to be entertainment business, you know. Yeah. And, and nowadays, uh, you know, I've kind of... My dad hasn't been very well, bless him, and, uh, you know, he's had tours with the Tremolos uh, recently, and, and I've kind of stepped in... Uh, and, and I'm singing tremolo songs. I'm, I'm right. literally doing... So it's, like, it's like taking over the family first. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm going into the family business, exactly. Uh, and your, your, uh, your, um, uh, your family, as you say, steeped, steeped in, in that. Your mum, uh, Carol Dilworth, uh, and, and there'll be plenty yeah. of viewers that will be familiar with, with what she did in, yeah. in the 60s. Uh, um, can we talk about your good looks? If you, if you like. Because I, <laughs> I, I think that... I mean, you, you've been a heartthrob for decade now. you remain one <laughs> but um has that ever been an impediment you're a great looking guy do you feel like you haven't been i don't know taken as seriously as you might have been because because of your model like good looks well when i was young I, I, I never thought that i was good looking or anything like that but then when uh when we put the first record out um as I said before, I was always a musician, and that's all I ever wanted to do. I wanted to be a musician. Yeah. I never wanted to be a pop star, a, a heartthrob. That wasn't my that wasn't my my goal in life, and it certainly wasn't the path that I thought that was for me. Yeah. Um, so when that happened, it was all a bit of a shock for me. Um, and you know, so so I don't I don't know. I mean, perhaps perhaps um, that kind of being marketed in that way. Um, you know, when I got thrown into the kind of machine, the part of the music industry. Almost that... like a sort of solo boy band, a boy band in yeah. person. It, it, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And for me, that, you know, that wasn't what I really wanted. I wanted to be known as a, as a you know, a musician and a singer and a songwriter. 